Fourteen-year-old Susan lives with her family on a large property in the suburbs that borders a national park. Her older brother is in a wheelchair. One day, he insists on going to the lake. After much argument, she reluctantly takes him, and when they come back, the footpath they have followed, it's the only path to and from the lake, doesn't lead back to the house. And Susan insists that her brother is different. This one started off slow, but about a third of the way through, something really interesting happened that made me sit up and take notice, and then the ending took a complete left turn. That's what I like about William Slater. He never does what I expect. There's your short review, and now I've got more to tell you about this book. I've got plenty to tell you about this book. This is the third William Slater book that I've reviewed, and there are plenty more that I'd like to review, but I won't. I think at some point in the future I may do a William Slater special and talk about the writer himself and do an overview of his books. Anyway, about this book. I said when I first introduced this book in one of my monthly roundups a while back, that this was the first time I'd seen a William Slater book with a teenage girl as a protagonist, and at first I didn't find it believable. I'm not saying that because the character is a girl. I just noticed that it was the first time I'd seen a girl as a protagonist, and the fact that I didn't find it believable at first is not because it was a girl. I just happened to find the first part of the book not as sympathetic or as believable as I have William Slater books in the past. Anyway, like I said, about a third of the way through the book, something happened that changed my mind about the book, and I'm going to tell you what it is. It's not really a spoiler. It's For me, as far as I'm concerned, it's the beginning of the book. Susan invites a friend of hers from school over to the house, and this girl has never been to the house before. She looks out the window of the upstairs bathroom, and she says, Hey, is that a hedge maze I see across the valley there? You have a hedge maze. Why aren't we exploring the hedge maze? And Susan says, oh, we don't know where that is. And the girl says, what? And Susan says, yeah, we, when we were kids, you know, we tried to find it, but we never could. And the girl says, I can see it right there. And Susan says, yeah, we've always been able to see it from this window, but we don't know where it is. And the girl says, that's weird. That's not normal. Susan had lived in that house her whole life, but having grown up there, she didn't ever stop to think about how bizarre that is. Anyway, they do end up finding the maze, or rather, the maze finds them, and it's not pleasant. So there, that's your reason for reading the book. Now, I do have some other things to say that may be spoilers. Her brother is studying physics, and he refers to the garden and the lake and and the woods Uh, out on the back of the property. He refers to them as the quantum garden. Their grandfather had been a physicist, and his colleagues had all been physicists, and he had won the Le Bon Prize. That's Nobel spelled backwards. So you start to get the feeling that this whole garden and lake and forest complex had been deliberately built with a certain process in mind. Slater goes about explaining all of this by using the word quantum freely and without thought. And that's one of my pet peeves, is authors trying to explain quantum physics affecting the larger world and doing a really poor job of it. The characters, of course, talk about Schrodinger's cat, and they get it all wrong. The The explanations were silly and, and sloppy and everything, but the story unfolded in a way that I enjoyed. And again... I didn't expect what happened at the end. And I've said in my reviews before that unpredictability is probably the thing that I value most in any book or movie or TV show or any kind of entertainment. Speaking of which, the same day I finished reading this book, I saw a movie called Coherence. It's an independent science fiction film from 2013. It turned out to be strikingly similar It had a similar subject matter, which was clumsily attempted to explain by the Schrodinger's cat analogy. It started to get interesting about halfway through, and then the ending caught me completely off guard. So I think that I will forever associate this book and this film together, and my next video I will do a review of the movie.